there have been a lot of green movement initiatives going around recently. Reusable straws, collapsible cups, tote bags, the bring your own whatevers, you name it, we have it. But have you ever asked yourself, just what are you trying to save? Take for example, a food waste in the dining hall. Have you ever asked yourself why there are three different types of bins? Do you know how the environment is being saved by us recycling our food waste? Probably not. Here's what happens. Food waste at U-Town will go through a process known as co-digestion. Before the process begins, food waste is segregated on the premises. Afterwards, the food waste is transferred into a PUB facility in Ulu Pandan. The food waste is converted to water sludge, which is primarily made of organic materials. Then, there's some bacteria that will convert these organic materials into biogas, and it will produce more energy. But this comes with its limitations as well. It relies on separating waste before transporting it to off-site treatment. However, the non-food items like cardboard and paper waste or food packaging cannot be processed. This can slow down the cleanup process. So, when we flippantly dump everything on our tray in the food waste bin, we cause more problems in this green effort. It is only after you understand the complex process behind food waste processing, then only we will know it's important to be meticulous in segregating our food waste. Having a greater understanding of the environment also helps scientists develop better green solutions. These are the amazing black soldier flies that are an alternative solution to the handling of food waste. Black soldier fly larvae are bred by NUS scientists in a laboratory. The fly larvae are used to eat food waste, which they then convert into plant fertilizer. Then when the black soldier fly larvae are done eating the food, the larvae are turned into animal food. So everything from food waste to the fly larvae goes back into the ecosystem. It's a zero waste solution. So it's win-win for the environment and for humans. But this could only have been possible because scientists had the knowledge. They knew about larvae breeding cycles, feeding patterns, and fly mating behaviour. These scientists are able to create great solutions because of what they know. But we know that not everyone in the green movement is like that. Let's ask one of our conservationist group mates. Hey, it's Singy. Hello. Oh, hi guys. Hello. What do you have there? Um, this? A uh, cup of coffee. Wait, a plastic cup with a metal straw? Uh, yeah? What about it? Why do you use a metal straw? Um, because everyone is using it, so it's kind of cool. Whoa, hold on there. Because it's cool? Right now, Singy participates in green movements, but only takes part for its popularity. Yet, she doesn't seem to understand the reason behind this green movement. Such passive observers are known to have a gap of their actions versus their actual knowledge. It's alright to join a movement in this way, but we could learn more from people whose participation is grounded in knowledge. Hey, hello, guess who it is? It's Jane. What a coincidence, we didn't plan this at all. Hi Jane, I hope you're quite the person I think. Hey, yeah, I kind of am. So, I hope you have an Instagram account that is the birds. Do you mind telling us what it's about? Yeah, so um, I do some research on bird care and then I share them on my Instagram page, Bird Bites. Hey, cool. So, what are you doing? Mm, I wanted to raise bird care awareness and also address some misconceptions that people might have about um, birds. So, do you know that uh, you can't feed raw beans to birds because they're toxic? Oh, I didn't know that. Thank you for sharing. Hi! So, from what we have just seen, Jane is an active participant. She consolidates research information and makes known the importance of proper bird care. She knows the names of birds, what different species look like, and what they require to survive and thrive. Such active members have in-depth knowledge of natural history. They know what they are caring for and how the flora and fauna behave and live. It is only with this knowledge that they can make more credible arguments. This helps them convince people exactly why they should join the Green Movement too. Let's meet one of the people we call an activist. Oh look, it's Chiyun. Hello Chiyun. Hi. Hi. Chiyun is currently a Year 3 student in NUS studying Environmental Studies. Chiyun has been awarded the 2018 HSBC NYAA Youth Environmental Award for her outstanding leadership and contributions to the environment. 
She has been active in the scene by organising Singapore's recent online climate strike. She offered her insights on how gaining in-depth knowledge helped her be a better activist. I needed some expertise in environmental studies to gain myself some credibility to come out and tell people like, I know all these things, mm. so I am qualified to tell you like what you have to change. So I feel that the environmental knowledge is still very important. Mm. And it's, I guess I would see it as some sort of professional skill or knowledge in order to be able to go into a business and tell them that I know what you have to do to change. Yes. In her life, she practices zero waste habits too. I only very recently decided to cut out all like single-use disposables from my life. So that means that I have my own like metal straw, I have my metal straw, my cup. And I tap out a lot, so I bring my own container with my own like bamboo fork and spoon. I mean, you go to the hawker centre, you use that spoon for like, one hour and then you dispose it already. I find that such a waste of like, resources, mm. and especially when these resources are made from like, fossil fuels mm -hmm. and there are a lot of carbon emissions. I mean, like Singapore is feeling the effects of global warming now. Like, the weather is pretty erratic. Only after I watched like, this new Netflix series called Our Planet that really shows you the environmental impact of humans and how that is changing the ecosystems around mm. the world. So for example, like the polar bears are now not able to hunt as efficiently or as much as they can before because the sea ice is retreating, which results in like the seals. I mean, it affects like the breeding and the way that the seals live. Mm. Biodiversity, you should look at it as a brick wall. And yeah, when one animal goes extinct, we are, taking, we are removing one brick and it can still stand. But you never know until like which brick you, you remove, everything starts to crumble. Take a look at how specific Tyrion is about her green lifestyle choices and her motivation for being part of the green movement. She knows that her reducing consumption is about sustainability and stemming climate change. She also understands the delicate ecosystems of the animals under threat. Educating herself through reading, Talking to experts or other peers in the green movement enriches your work in the green movement. Having a strong base of knowledge enables you to share valuable insights to others learning more about the environment. A solid understanding of the environment also lends you credibility as an activist. So going back to our first question, just what are you trying to save? Reading and speaking with others to learn more cannot just answer this question. It can help you be a more effective part of making our Earth a better place to live in.